Hello, everyone. Welcome to Breaking the Huddle. I'm excited to be with you again here today uh, from East Ham. This week, I have my dear friend that we've known each other for about 41 years. Yeah, and, yep, that's how many years he's been locked up. But yet on the inside, he couldn't be more free because of Christ. Roger DeGuermo, love you, my, my brother in the Lord. And uh, just what Jesus Christ means to you. Well, today, especially, I've, I've been do, doing this for the, the weekend, and every time you say something like hope or value or, or um, desire, everything you talk about pops up in, in my word. And, and I'm glad I have it because the first 20 years of being in prison, uh, I was out of here. I mean, I was, they used to call me animal. I was on death row for 14 years. I had eight execution dates. I was six hours away from the last one in 94, and I didn't care. I didn't know anything about God. I didn't want to know you come down there on death row, and, and, I, and as you know, I give you the blues. And I, I liked giving you the blues. It was what I did back then. I had no problem but with it. But you didn't intimidate me at all. Uh, I okay, didn't. I wasn't. I want to get that real clear. You, you, got, you guys got that clear? <laughs> I didn't just. I didn't care if I intimidated him or not back then. If, if it worked, it worked. It didn't. It was okay. Uh, That's what's so luck about it. But the thing I, I, I realized by hindsight was that the word, my word says that we plant, we water, and God gives the increase. So now I see where he was planting and watering. I didn't know it. I didn't have any care or anything. But nowadays, even this week, things will come up in the word or talk about in when I come to the church and I can see back when he planted it. I didn't know it was being planted, but the increase God gives it to me today. And you can't, you can't see anything when, you're, when you get into the Lord. And when I come into the Lord, I was like, okay, you, you say you'll take me as I am, good luck with that. And you said you'll finish the work you started, good luck with that. But since 1996 to today, I have never felt his lack of presence in my life. Yeah. And I tell you what, for 42 years of my life, I was lost. I, I, I didn't need anybody, want anybody. I, I didn't understand what I was doing. But when I come over here off of Dead Row in 94, and I got accosted by, and I don't mean attack, but I got accosted by Christians. And they told me that I was a walking miracle. And I said, ah, okay, fine, I, you know, get away from me. And then the next guy come up and tell me the same thing. And I said, oh, I better find out. I'm still hustling at that time. I said, I better find out what these people are doing. <laughs> See, I was in bondage, but I didn't know I was in bondage. These people told me I'm out of bondage. I have no idea what you're talking about. I want to know. So I started hanging out with Christians, and I started doing everything with Christians. It didn't, I'm a little slow, but I'm not stupid. Before Christ, chaos. After Christ, I got peace. So here I am in Christ, and I'm, and I'm doing things, and about a year goes by, and I said, ooh, I'm going to try some of that. So everything I tried in Christ worked better, and everything out of it didn't. I said, okay, so 96, I said, okay, Lord, you said you'd take me as I am. Good luck with that. You said you'll finish the work you started. Good luck with that. And here we are today. And I'm telling you right now, I used to cut so, so bad that they would say, animal, because that's what they called me. I was on death row. I said, can you uh, uh, hold that down? Hold what down? I said, well, I got a wife, and you're up in this. And being, I didn't know I was doing it. But now when people come around and cut so on me, it's like walking by somebody that smokes. It's like, ah. My whole spirit is, so I know God's in me, and that reminds me that I'm not alone anymore. And he gives me the and just about four months ago, like I said, 41 years, four months ago, they told me I have another 10 years set off, which means I won't come up for pro for another 10 years. And I said, okay, thank you. They go, what do you mean, thank you? And I said, well, let me tell you this. One, you let me get Christ in my life, and I'm free, so where I'm living is not a problem. Trust me on this. But two, you told me, the organization, you're going to kill me in six hours in 1994. Now, you same people are going to tell me you're going to give me 10 more years free room and board. I don't see a downside to that conversation, people. I mean, I'm not crazy. I'm sorry. I'm not making fun of what you're doing. But when you're free in Christ, you're free in Christ. Amen. I have no problem with this. Let me ask you something. Sir. Amen. I don't know if you can zoom, zoom in and out or not, but it says this here. It says, it's not about me. Uh, and you've had this long time. It's not about me. As we close this out, uh, Roger, sometimes I still call you animal, but 
That's because I think you're an animal for Jesus. Now. I am an animal for that's, Christ. That's, yes. that's a compliment. <laughs> you know, they thank you, Jesus. I told you a long time ago, don't, don't stop. I'm not going to stop calling you animal because you're an animal for Jesus. But your, your Bible says it's not about me. And I know you well enough, and I would know. And it's truly not about you anymore <laughs> that uh, Jesus Christ is everything and more. To you value him. And I, since the day that you committed, I told my wife coming over here, and I told Fran as I was uh, driving over here in the car about you, that uh, when Animal made up his mind, I've never seen him go backwards. Doesn't mean you've not had bad days, because I know you have. I have. But as far as your faith and your love, I've never seen you go backwards. And that's what I appreciate about you more than any. Thing else. I'm Indeed. not asking you to be perfect. Indeed. You're not perfect. I'm not perfect. Far from it. Ask my wife. But I've never seen you go backwards. And that's what I love and appreciate about you. And and that's why uh, I do anything for you and in my ability because I so believe in you. The Jesus that's in you. The scripture says this that, uh, help me, Lord. Remember those who led you, who spoke the word of God to you. Consider the result of their conduct. Imitate their faith. Remember those who led you. You're a leader. People watch you here. You preach with your feet more than you do your mouth, and you're a pretty good talker. And, and uh, remember those who led you, who spoke the word of God to you, and you always, you write me letters, and it's just scripture, 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 scripture. Consider the result of their conduct. People watch you, it's a genius. and they, they see your joy and your zeal. Uh, most know how long you're going in here, and for you to praise the Lord when they gave you another 10 years, you meant that. Mm. You meant that. I know you meant that. And it says imitate their faith. Their faith. So when they say, I want to be just like, they're not saying that. They want to be like the Jesus that Amen. they see in you. Amen. And that is my son's message. That is the pattern that you have created and you don't really realize it how people watch you and that's why i love you so much and i respect you so much like that young lady down there on the front row off camera fran she's my sister i i, I mean she is my flesh and blood we have a lot of fun together and she's family to me your family to me and uh, as fran is to me and i just can't say enough and, and uh I want you to know that I love you. I, I so believe in you. You're the real deal. And, and I wouldn't want you to be any different. I wish you were better looking, but I can't do anything about that, you understand. I got over but that. <laughs> I got over that a lot of years myself, you know what I'm talking about? <laughs> well, can I read the scripture one real quick? Say it real quick because we I'm close really it out here. Okay, okay, I want to read. This is. Amen. <laughs> I've learned to be content in whatsoever state I'm in. That's what, what our brother Peter says in here. Um, Paul says, he says, I've learned to be content. So I've learned it because of this, this uh, prison system to be content because anything outside of, of what God's doing today right here belongs to God, and you have to give that to him. But the scripture I was going to read comes out of James, and we're talking about the 10 years, and, and this when it happened, it was funny when you said, I wrote, he said in James 1, uh, 2, he said, my brethren, count it all joy when you fall into diverse temptation. Uh, temptation, temptation, that's it. Knowing this, that the trying of your faith produces or works patience, but let patience have a perfect work and that you may be perfect and tired wanting for nothing. And underneath that, I wrote a, an arrow over here in the Bible that said, verse 12, blessed is the man that yep. endures temptation or trials, for when he is tried, he shall receive the crown of life, which the Lord has promised to them that love him. You can't get any more than that ever. When God loved you, he so loved the world. That's what he called reckless, endless, reckless love of God. Amen. He so gave that. And I, I, I wake up morning, I love that song, woke up this morning with my mind, set on Jesus. And it makes me happy. Yeah. And when you come, come up here, that makes me happier. When you leave, I make me sad. But God's still there. Amen. And he's always going to be there. And so I encourage you people, wherever you're at, your circumstances, are irrelevant for what God's got planned for you and what he's going to plan for you. Every circumstance is usable. He said, all things work for the good of those to them that love God and call it according to purpose. We understand that. 
And I hope you find that, Amen. find those that hope and that belief that God will Amen. fulfill what you need, not what you want, but what you need. And my thing, if I'm going to stay here 41 years and another 10 more years, I'll be 75. I'm going to be here. That's good. Because there's brothers in here that are really needed. He said there's a, the, the field is, is, uh, is white and, and there's the workers are few. So if I happen to be here, he said he'd supply all of my needs. He does. He said he loves me enough to, to let me wake up every morning with everything I need to do his job. I can't ask for anything because 42 years I, I didn't do it. Amen. Thank you, my brother. Thank you. Thank you all for joining us once again, breaking the huddle. We love you very much. Brother and Lord, I know you were blessed by this testimony. I love being around this Thank guy, you, Jesus. and I can't get enough of him. And uh, hey, you're special, you're God's creation. Value your life. You're one of a kind. No matter where you are, it doesn't matter. Value who you are in Christ. Share with everybody, friends, family, whoever, MikeBarber.org, and uh, breaking the huddle. Again, we'll be back with you next week. We love you very much. Have a great week.